The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. Is everybody ready for a little bit of higher yield and lower prices in the market? Watch out, folks. we got the S&Ps right now down about three-quarters of a percent, trading off 39 points at 52.56. You're about 80 points from where we were about 24 hours ago. We'll call it 26 hours ago. 7 a.m. yesterday, 53.28. What is interesting here, our man Bud Rolfs, miss him, love him. Uh, he loved those primary trading ranges, right? How many points was this trading in? I was thinking of him this morning, and I said, well, there's one move. You trade from a price point early yesterday of about 53.20 down to 52.90 that's a 30 point move in the s p's and what did we just get about a 30 35 point move in the s p's pretty similar moves you could call it an a to b c to d formation and yeah we pick up the trading day as we've already made that move with s p's lower nasdaq 100 you're down a full percent this morning look at this move now we got higher yields we're jumping to that next the first article we're going to jump to is higher yields coming at you right now and we have the NASDAQ 100 off a full percent to the decimal point, off 185 points right now. You're off 1% at 18,312 right now. I mentioned yields. How about 4.4%? Just that quick. 4.39 actually will be exact. Dow off 321 points right now. So much for Dow 40,000 hats. Not quite yet. Dow off 319 points. That's an eight tenths percent drop this morning, trading at thirty nine thousand five seventy nine. And the Russell, particularly volatile as usual, off one point one percent, trading just under twenty one hundred this morning, two thousand ninety eight. Bitcoin, there's a pullback for you, man. Bitcoin off four thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars, trading at sixty five thousand five sixty five. That's a drop of almost seven percent. Crude. Coming at you, man, above $85. We'll talk about crude as well. Crude up a buck 40. Fill up those gas tanks if you get a chance, folks. The price of the pump is going up, and that is potentially going to complicate the picture of inflation for the Fed. Not their preferred inflation gauge, right? Energy, that's why they suck it out when they talk about core. But it complicates the picture, that's for sure, as we're going to be paying higher prices at the pump. And that could weigh down uh, everything in terms of disposable income, etc. Gold, can't keep gold down right now, folks. Gold up $19.50. You're trading at $22.76 right now. Another rise right back to where we were on the highs late Sunday night. You pull back intraday yesterday, just after my program at about $22.50. Look at this volatility, right? Gold. Up right now at $22.76. We'll jump to the dollar index. And what do we have? Well, we got higher yields, and you got a stronger dollar. A little bit of a pullback recently, but we're still sitting right at about 105. Look at this run we had yesterday, man. Pay attention to the trends in this market, folks, because they are intact. And I say that as in look at this run from March 8th. We're into February. You just had the dollar go from 102.50 up to 105. If you're talking about an A to B, C to D, you start at about 101. You go to 105. That's about a four-point A to B, C to D formation. And let's just see on a Fibonacci basis what kind of a pullback we had going on there. Yeah, pretty much right in line with the 618 pullback. And if you're talking about an A to B, C to D, you're talking about maybe in the 107 area, maybe just below that, which is interesting because right to the highs of October, right? It's all lining up, man. And that would correlate to what? Higher yields. Well, what are yields doing this morning? Yields are going up. There's your 10-year. Let's put it on a short-term time frame so you can really see this action, man. You talk about it. Down another 12 ticks. I mentioned the 10-year. Is that about – we're going to hit 4.4 before I even finish this uh, morning market update to kick off the first segment of the program. We're at 4.393. 4.393 to be exact. We'll call it 4.4 as we round up. Uh, the 10-year down 13 ticks at 109.17 right now. And yeah, you talk about it, man. And let's jump over to the VIX. Now, we talked about this one as well. 
Okay, we're putting it on a daily, quite an elevated VIX. False breakout to the downside. I talked about yesterday, we were at a critical area in this VIX as we were back at that trend line. You had higher highs, higher lows. You came into the Fed meeting on March 20th. We dipped below that area, but it seems like the VIX got ahead of itself. Maybe the market got ahead of itself, quite an elevated level from where we were. You get the VIX trading at 1461 right now. All right. We got to jump over to Tesla. I saw that news when I was coming on the air. Yeah. Tesla's going to 100, folks. And it might go lower than that if Elon takes uh, a quick trip out of this, this company. Now, the price reflection today to 163 is not even reflected on this chart yet. Okay. This news just hitting the tape. What time was it at? Yeah, 9 o'clock. So I saw it hitting right now, right as I was getting ready for the program. They're talking about it in the den, justifiably so. Uh, <laughs> nice. So we got one take. I appreciate it, Fletch. Uh, worse than the worst expectations for Tesla, the lowest amount of delivery since the Q3 of 2022, not only a miss, but an epic miss. And to get over to those numbers, man, and remember, folks, Elon, it gets down to 100. I've been talking about it. You're going to see a short squeeze of epic proportions, um, not a short squeeze, a margin call squeeze, you could call it, as Elon's going to have a margin call if the prices get down there. Can you imagine being short Tesla and knowing that Elon's going to get a margin call if you approach 100 or $110? You're going to start hearing a lot more about that, man. I can't wait to hear the articles that pinpoint those price points in terms of where he is going to hit that margin call. But the number they come in at, <coughs> excuse me, Analysts, analysts were looking for, make sure I don't jack up that volume on you, uh, 457,000. Let's see, getting into the numbers. There they are. Deliveries, 386,000. Total production, 433. Yeah, and they were looking for 443,000 deliveries. Yeah, with a median of 431. Analysts were expecting deliveries around 457,000 for the first three months of the year, and they come in at 386. There's a reason why they got price cuts across the board, man. Electric vehicles are in trouble. The whole industry has changed, it feels like, in the last couple months, right? You got Hertz, their news. You got Tesla. They've been cutting prices for a solid year. Can't do anything with demand in this market right now. Yeah, it's a tough one, man. They were looking for 457,000. Estimates range from a high of 511 to a low of 414 and they come in at 386. Tesla's head of investor relations sent around a company called compiled consensus based on 30 analyst estimates over the weekend to select investors. The consensus said analysts were expecting a mean of 443,000 deliveries and a median of 431. It's a tough one, man. Watch out for that one and keep your eyes on it because as I mentioned, yeah, Imagine, right? Elon getting a margin call, and I don't think he's going to come up with that money, man. I don't. I don't think that's the deal. I think he's going to go into to greater things. He's he's done what he can at that company, right? He's changed the world to a degree where he brought electric vehicle production to the main, and that company marches on. And he's probably going to try and put us on Mars and put rockets on Mars and go from there at this point, uh, versus leveraging the shares in SpaceX to maintain his ownership in Tesla. It's going to be a tough one for Tesla today. Get down about 12 bucks, 162.65, and we'll come back, folks. Talk to him. You have a in this market. Yeah, that's not going to help the market out right now. It's down 18%. NASDAQ 100 off more than 1.1%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We have markets continuing to slide. You get the S&Ps right now down 44 points. NASDAQ 100 off by more than a full percent right now, off 214 points. We got yields rising right now to talk about some of this market action. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Folks, every trading day right here on Tiger TV from the Schwab Network, Fast Market with your hosts, Kevin Hicks and Tom White. The outstanding team over there, they usually walk you through three hypothetical trade setups, all of them involving options, all of them involving defined risk. Uh, this morning is the definition of a fast market so far. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, this is um, the you know the pace of the things we've been talking about in general have gone from slow to faster, Tommy. And it all started yesterday with some of the ISM data that that, that we got that was above 50 now and much higher than expected. And now you've got a Tesla miss on deliveries, and you've got basically the market with its defense on the field now, Tommy. Yeah, we got right across the board, man. I got the Thinkorswim platform up here. I mean, you got Bitcoin down 5000 bucks, no matter where you're looking right now. Um, but you mentioned Tesla. I have Tesla up here on the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, boy, if you're watching the market in the last 20 minutes, we all saw it. Really missing those deliveries. You're down about $13 right now. You're at 162 uh, Can you give us a little taste on Tesla? I'm sure everybody's kind of watching this equity. It's been struggling recently, and it looks like those struggles might continue. A lot of the theory with Tesla has been that they're, they're in the middle of two growth opportunities with different regions of the world and, and different things that are going on. So that seems to, that theory seems to have played out here in Tesla with a pretty substantial miss. But what more, what might be more of a problem is the overall tone of attitudes towards the EV market right now. And the fact that people in the U S aren't embracing 
full EVs like they were recently. Uh, they're they're leaning more towards hybrids, and they're you know re investing in uh, gasoline engines and internal combustion engines. So there's a bit of a trough here, a bit of a chasm between what's going on in the EV world. So yeah, it's certainly one worth watching. The um, you know the the movement is still there. It's just slowing considerably, Tommy. You know, and it's all speculation on on, on my part, and and I'm kind of asking you to speculate, but I found myself wondering, Kevin, if you think because boy, I mean, he's such a dynamic man. He's changed the world in in many different areas. He's trying to put us on Mars, right? He he brought production of EVs to the forefront for every single manufacturer out there. But very difficult for him to change the demand component of that industry, which you bring up is a real problem right now, it looks like. Do you ever see him possibly stepping away from that company? I'm going, you know, ultra speculation here, but I found myself wondering because he's got so many different endeavors. You know, he thinks big. Um, and I have found myself, I'm speaking for myself right now, that, you know, wh where does he go there if it becomes a demand issue when really he was, you know, I, I felt like he was really taking over the production issue and, and the supply issue that was lacking by bringing that to the forefront. And I wonder if he's going to, gonna, you know, maybe just leave that to the reins. Do you think about that at all? I know I'm really, you know, going out on a ledge there, but I was wondering if you had any thoughts as we all kind of watch this stock continue to struggle. And I agree that it's not just a Tesla problem, man. This is, this is as we've seen, much larger than just that one company. I think that Elon Musk has shown no indication that he's reducing his commitment to Tesla vehicles. I think he's working on more affordability and lower prices. I think slowly but surely he's leaning he's uh, leaning more into the infrastructure. I think one of the big problems right now for EVs is we need not only the energy but the charging stations to do to to service all these electric cars. And so you're starting to hear discussions about that. So and but but remember when you're talking about Tesla, yes. A lot of what we talk about is their electric car company, but boy, there's other things going on at Tesla that could make the stock attractive, like the robo taxi, like full self driving, like robotics, like energy storage. There's a lot of things going on within this company, and then we're not even getting into SpaceX and other companies, but within the walls of Tesla, there's so many things that could make this company attractive. They, they, they're they just in a little gap between them right now, it appears. I appreciate the take and the input, as always, man, as we're all watching that stock. And, boy, it's it's an adventure, to put it lightly. Uh, with that in mind, Kevin, we, we've talked about it, man. we got a little bit of rising yields. We're, we're looking at this market, of course, in the red. Do you guys have any equities you're talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today, Kevin? Yeah, like Folio will do a presentation on Dave and Buster's Play, P L A Y is, the, is the, the letters for their stock, but it's Dave and Buster's Entertainment. And then we'll look at Micron, the, the memory stock is, that, that has broken out in the last few weeks. And then we'll look at Western Digital, WDC, in the, in the final segment. So three good names to look at with an interesting look at Dave and Buster's in the like Folio segment. Yeah, look at that. Pulled it up on the Thinkorswim platform, man. Haven't taken a look at that in a while. Boy, you talk about a rocket ship since late last year from 35 and we're pushing uh, almost $64, $65 this week. Remarkable. Kevin, I appreciate the time, man. I appreciate your input on some of those questions. I know they're not easy. We're just speculating. But, boy, uh, this is quite a market, and we got some volatility. You got the VIX up a little bit this morning. I look forward to the program Fast Market at 12 today, Kevin. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow as always, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too, Kevin. Folks, check it out. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, easy time slot to remember uh, during your trading day. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at the Schwab Network, you heard it. They're talking three great stocks. Look at that chart. Dave and Buster's, man. Uh, yeah, 64.43 as of yesterday. Pretty remarkable acceleration with this market. Just off of the all-time highs, I think, back in when? 2017. Pretty remarkable, but it's been quite a run for Dave and Buster's. And then, yeah, how about Micron, right? MU. Look at that run. Up to 124.30 yesterday. You're backing off those highs a bit. A stratospheric run, you could call it. And then Western Digital as well. Quite a run that it's had. 
from what, $40 almost chopping around. We had a low last year of 32. We're pushing 70, 85 as of yesterday. And with the market, you're backing off a bit. Going to be an interesting one for Tesla. I know those are not easy questions. I appreciate Kevin's take on them and um, full speculation, but I always appreciate the take. Um, and yeah, he makes some great points, man. It's going to be interesting to see where that goes. And uh, Elon is in it for the long haul. That's the one thing I agree. You know, he's not worried about those share prices. Uh, not often do you hear CEO say that the share prices are priced too high. Remember that one? When was that? That was a while ago back when he was talking about that it's priced too high. Uh, he's in for the long haul. And maybe that's where, you know, he's willing to suffer the consequences of some of those profits, dropping those price points because, yeah, he's got to get to economies of scale. He's got to do it with cheap vehicles. And we'll see if they can get it done. But oof, it's going to be a little bit of a rough one in the in the open for them. They miss deliveries. They miss it in pretty much a grand fashion. And yeah, it's a bigger issue than just Tesla right now in that industry. Kevin made the point, hybrids, right? Not full EVs. They got to build out those charging stations to assure people they're not going to get lost in the woods without a charging station. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the market open. Don't go away. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. you got the S&Ps down 42 points right now. Tesla catches a little bit of a bounce there. Again, I appreciate Kevin's take. Those are not easy questions, man, saying, hey, you think Elon's going to take a hike? Um, but that's why I love them. That's why I love fast market, folks. Check it out at 12 Eastern time every trading day. 
Tesla down 5.9% on their missed deliveries this morning. You have the NASDAQ 100 down more than a percent right now off 210 points, trading 18,283 this morning. S&P's off about 40. That's about an eight-tenth percent drop, 52.55. You get the Dow right now, opens up down about 350. That's nine-tenths percent. And the Russell, as I always say, particularly volatile, off 1.3%, 2,095. Bitcoin. Down a nice round number, 5000 bucks. we'll call it. That's about a 7% drop for Bitcoin. You jump over to crude, just under $85. You're trading at $84.86 right now. We keep our eye on gold. Gold up $23 at $22.80 for gold right now. And we got to keep our eye on yields, man. The 10-year down pretty much right where we kicked off the program, the 10-year. Down what, 12 ticks, 13 ticks right now. We're sitting with a 10-year yield of about 4.4% on that 10-year yield. As it seems like the cuts may just not be coming quick enough for this market, man. We're seeing higher yields coming at you right now in this market. Pretty interesting. Yeah, 4.393 to be exact. We check in on the dollar as the market opens. Dollar sliding a bit, but you had quite an acceleration yesterday. We're just under 105 right now for that dollar index. And we back it up to... Crude for a moment, 84.83, man. You put this thing on a daily, right? Whew. This thing has been on a run since December 13th, folks. You talk about it, right? Higher highs, higher lows. We're now pushing the area that we were in back in October. And the only thing above this is 95 bucks. You know, you can make the point that maybe $90 is out there. You're back to the highs that we had in August of 2023. It's been quite a run. And this will complicate the picture a bit when you talk about headline inflation. It's not going to complicate core, okay? But it is going to complicate headline inflation. And that is going to be something that the chairman has to deal with as they go forward with uh, the potential for cuts coming down the line, as we will see. All right, we jump around to what else we have going on in this market, and let's kick it off with crude. Oil rises to $85 just off that price level. OPEC cuts and geopolitical risk fuels the rally. So you have an Israeli airstrike on Iran's embassy in Syria. I saw headlines out there earlier that Iran is pledging to strike back. Geopolitical tensions are rising. Crude futures were above 45 bucks. And yeah, we have West uh, Texas Intermediate rising 2.1%. The global Brent benchmark nearing $89, as I mentioned, folks. Uh, yeah, and they give you the chart, the same one I was just looking at, man. $85 is where we're at. You're coming into kind of a critical area there. Couple of takes here. We've been saying that we're going to breach 90 in the summer. If anything, that has come a little bit earlier. That's one founder and director of research at Consultant Energy Aspects in a Bloomberg TV interview this morning. We have seen inventories not build. The physical market continues to remain very, very strong, and you're just seeing finally that being reflected in the prices. Okay, uh, we got gas at about 3.50 a gallon right now. I'd see that's pretty fair. We got some pretty decent prices in Tampa because we got a port going on in Tampa. I know some parts of the country well above that price point. Crude's recent rally comes after the IEA last month lifted its forecast for consumption. That was before Chinese manufacturing data this week showed signs of a recovery. That's going to consume more oil as well. OPEC Plus is expected to affirm its current output policy at a review meeting scheduled for tomorrow that would lead to a deficit through the end of the year an escalation in tension in the middle east has coincided with firmer oil fundamentals the market is tightening thanks to opec plus supply cuts which is evident in the strength we have seen in time spread so pay attention to that market man that is quite a lineup of variables all pointing to higher prices and when you think about it folks okay crude's at 350 a pop right now 350 a gallon okay Depending on what kind of water you're buying at your local grocery store, sometimes some of those waters are $2.95 a gallon, $2.50 a gallon. I think Zephyr Hills, I'm going to have to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up at the break and find out what a gallon of Zephyr Hills water is at Publix. Now, Zephyr Hills is a little pricey. Publix is definitely a little pricey. But you think about the numbers for inflation, right? What a dollar used to buy you, what $3 used to buy you. We're at $3.50 for a gallon of oil. There is a potential for higher prices across the board here. So be aware of what's going on in that crude market for sure. We jump back to yields. That's the other one to keep your eye on. And as we pull it up, bond sell-off builds as Fed seen delaying rate cuts. Okay, that's the headline from Bloomberg this morning. Yeah, it was last night, technically, edited this morning out there. Treasury slide ripples globally before payrolls. Now, we got payrolls coming up on Friday. 
Remember that one. We get ADP private payrolls tomorrow as well. We get Chairman Powell speaking tomorrow as well. NASDAQ futures contracts slide 0.5%. Well, they got to update that one, man. We're off by 1.2% almost right now. Gold soaring to a record. And uh, yeah, the article speaks for itself, right? We got yields rising. They got to update that. We're approaching 4.4% already. Data showed an expansion of U.S. manufacturing. Kevin Hinks, our man, he talked about it, that ISM number. You had an expansion in manufacturing for the first time since September of 2022. The print has forced traders to dial back bets on Fed policy easing with fewer than three cuts now priced for this year. Remember when we were talking about six and seven? Man, always remember, folks, that things can change quickly. I think uh, that's one of the things I've learned tremendously in this market. Be ready to turn on a dime. Things move so quickly in this market. The world can change over the course of two or three weeks like we've never seen before. I have never seen before. They also see a good chance of a delay in policy easing with the odds of a June cut briefly slipping below 50% on Monday. What happened to June? We've done this story over and over before, man. Is June going to get pushed back now, right? Uh, the impact rippled out worldwide. British 10-year yields climbing more than 12 basis points. German Borrowing costs up more than 10 basis points, okay? Rate cut wages could be paired further if data on Friday show the U.S. economy continues to add jobs at a healthy kit. I mean, why are they going to cut, okay? Why are they going to cut? Everyone thinks – I was reading great takes recently. I've talked about it on this program. If we didn't have recency bias, which is a very real thing, okay, if we didn't have the recency bias – of this 0% environment that we've been in, if you just look at that, the fundamentals of this economy, the fundamentals of where we are in inflation, and where the Fed is, you would not see the dramatic pressure that the market is trying to apply on the Fed, thinking that there is a need for rapid cuts with where they are. Okay, the Fed has two mandates, full employment and price stability. I would be hard pressed to make the case outside of the fact that somehow we're so used to 0% or somewhere near that boundary line, that anything is in question right now besides price stability. Are you telling me that full employment's in question right now? You know, you can make those cases that there might be lag coming down the line, okay? But I don't think that that argument is the one that went over would win over right now. I think the argument that would win over is that we need price stability. It's still quite not there yet. We now have energy prices rising dramatically. I talked about insurance prices yesterday that are a big problem. Those are going to contribute to housing prices, right? Rent, owner equivalent rent, a huge component of CPI, might not be the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, but it is a preferred inflation. It is a inflation gauge. It is a consumer price index. The definition of inflation, consumer prices, one component of that. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk some more markets. We'll talk some equities. Don't go away. Be back in three minutes. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
He has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets continuing to slide. S&P is now off 52 points right now. You're trading at basically session lows off a full percentage point on the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, that's a 1.4% drop. How about the Dow right now off 1.1% and the Russell, particularly volatile, off 1.6%. Let's jump around. Used to be the Magnificent 7. We'll hit those 7. Now it's the Fab 4. But boy, they're all paying the price this morning. Apple shares off about 1% right now. Microsoft off 1% right now. <coughs> Excuse me. We jump over to Google shares off by 1.6% right now. Meta shares off a full percentage point right now. Amazon off 1.3% right now. Tesla shares, they catch a slight bid on the open, still off by 1.4% right now. And Nvidia shares, they even trade lower by 2 0.6% right now to the downside off $23 at $879. We jump around to some of those other chip makers. AMD, look at that. From the run it had yesterday to the run it has today, AMD shares off by 4% right now. We look at Intel shares off by 1.7. Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM, excuse me. Yeah, they had quite a run yesterday, and they only give back about half of that. You're down by 1.4%, but boy, that was quite a run you had for Taiwan Semi yesterday, up to 143 for Taiwan Semi. We check in on crude again. you got to keep our eye on crude, man. 84.79, and we check in on those yields again as you get the 10-year sitting right at just under 4.4%. Pretty remarkable. And yeah, I pulled up a price of Zephyr Hills Water. Uh, just pulled up Instacart, pulled up Publix. $2.19, so not quite there yet. And uh, for all fairness, I mean, there's cheaper gallons of water in there. But boy, when you can buy just a gallon of water for two twenty, dollars folks, and we've been used to buying a gallon of gas for $3.20, $3.50 when gas was down at 66 bucks, that doesn't compute, folks, okay? I mean, you know, we're all used to buying water right now, but you think about the productivity of a gallon of gasoline versus the productivity of a gas gallon of water, you have the ability to get water in other aspects, right? You can buy a Brita water filter and use your own faucet to a certain degree. Yes, you're paying for it in that regard. You can't do the same with gasoline. Um, and so always keep that in mind when you get at these lofty levels where a gallon of gasoline approaches a gallon of water. Because at least at this time, I know water is a commodity. There's nothing like it. We need it like no other commodity in the world to survive. But keep that one in mind, because I always think it in mind. And I said to myself, you know, when gas got to a price point where you can buy, a, you know, a gallon of gas outside at 7-Eleven, or you can walk in and buy a gallon of water on the same exact price, I don't know if that's where that price point's going to hold. And look at this. we got yields continuing to rise. You get the 10-year. Now down what? Almost 15 ticks right now at 109.15. 
and you got markets continuing to slide, and that's pushing the yield above 4.4. On that little run we've got, folks, we are above 4.4% right now on the 10-year. Watch out. All right, speaking of yields, where are we? Yeah, that was our conversation. Here's the CME Fed Funds Watch tool. Now, what's interesting is you can jump around meetings, okay? And this is not the holy grail at all, all right? But it is one error that you can get a quick gauge of where the market is, what's it pricing in for Fed cuts, okay? And you can jump to individual meetings if you want. I'll post this link in the Tiger's Den for the Tigers and Tigresses in there. You jump to June, and we're talking about potentially 56% chance that they cut, okay? There's somehow a 1.4% chance that they cut twice. We'll call that an ultimate tail risk, okay? They're talking about a 42% chance in June that they stay where they are right now. All right, what is interesting is that stayed the same since where we were in March. Some slight deviations there, okay? We got up where they really thought that was coming in the beginning of March, where the odds were as high as almost 64% that we were going to cut, get a cut in June. Odds are back down to 56. But when you go out a little bit, all right, then we go to July. July, they're thinking that 50-50 chance we have one cut, but there's a 20% chance we get two. I don't think that's happening right now, folks. We got a lot of data coming down the line, okay? We got private payrolls tomorrow. We got non-farm payrolls on Friday. That's one of the biggest data points of the month, without a doubt. And we get those a couple, of course, before July. But it is remarkable when you look at how many cuts are still priced into this market right now. And remember how quickly things can change. You shift out to September. September... They're only pushing a 10% chance we have no cuts, okay? Five and a quarter to 5.5% is where we're at right now. Fed Funds Watch tool from the CME on that meeting, September 18th, is pointing to the fact that maybe there's a one out of 10 chance we have no cuts. They're talking about maybe a one out of three chance that we get one cut by then. And then you got about a 41% chance that we have two cuts by the September meeting. Now, if you get a June cut, maybe they go June, they skip a meeting in July, they come back in September, okay? Uh, very difficult to imagine unless the data really starts to slide here, okay? And they have to come in quick, quicker than they may have expected that we get three down the line. We go to November, just out of curiosity. Very little chance the market pricing in that we get no cuts by November. Now, all the chairman said is that they're pretty confident that it'll be appropriate to begin cutting at some point this year. That's been his line for a while. OK, so, yes, there's a very real chance that by the time you get to November or December, we're going to get one cut. Boy, if he ever changes that terminology, pay attention, because he's been speaking like that for a while. I think if you've listened to him at all, you'll remember that verbiage, right? We still feel very certain that it'll be appropriate to cut at some point this year. He's been saying that since like January or February. So it's all right. Well, what does that mean when it's February? Well, guess what? We're already into April. Right. The next meeting's May 1st. We're going to be there before we know it. And is the data lining up just yet? I don't know if it's lining up just yet, especially if we get pickups like we did in the ISM. Now, they're looking at about a 25 percent chance that we get one cut by November. This is where you really want to look to and about a 40 percent chance we get two. So by the November meeting, the market right now is pricing in. You're either going to get one or two cuts by the November meeting to a degree of about what what is that 63 percent right about a two out of three probability that we're at somewhere in the range of one to two cuts by november and we'll finish it up with the december odds december odds very low tail risk probably because of the chairman's words in there right very appropriate they're pretty confident not even pretty i'm adding that word they're confident that it will be appropriate to begin cutting at some point this year um and then you see the odds about a 12 percent chance we only get one cut by the end of the year 30 percent chance we get two cuts and the biggest number out there is still three but you can see that the biggest numbers out there is three. But where's the weight? The weight is to less cuts, okay, not to more. Three is the biggest number. Two is just behind it, though, and that's by the end of the year. So you're now looking at a probability of two to three cuts, not three. You're looking at a probability of two to three cuts, and we got a bunch of data coming down the line this week. And as I mentioned, you got Chairman Powell out there speaking on Wednesday. You have, a, you have more than that. There's a bunch of Fed speak out there, but the chairman will be speaking tomorrow. We get ADP private payrolls tomorrow, and then we get non-farm payrolls on Friday. And keep your eye on wages. Keep your eye on jobs. Boy, you ever see a big jobs number out there, get ready for higher yield, folks, coming at you. And what's been coming at you? Higher gold prices. What a great time, man. My dad's celebrating his 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. we got a big sale going on. This is running through this week only, okay? You can sign up for the Gold Report. 
Use the code 22 years at checkout. You lock in 35% savings off the monthly price, and that saving saves, stays with you forever. We don't do these types of sales, folks. This is a big one. Uh, it's a big anniversary, of course, 22 years, 2022, man. So head on over there. You sign up. You still get a 30-day money-back guarantee for new signups. What can, what can go wrong, right? No risk. You don't like it, you cancel. You like it, you lock in the 35% savings. You go from there, we get gold, trading at all-time highs. One more segment, folks. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together, and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50%, and I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole, in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price, and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just enter promo code 22 years at checkout, and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price, and this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Markets just pretty much sitting uh, where we kind of picked up. We traded down about 10 points, zooming in on the action. We opened the markets at about 52.50 at 9.30. We're trading at 52.44 right now. NASDAQ 100 off 253. Dow with a little bit of a slide, though. Dow now off 1.2%, off 476 points. Jump over to Boeing shares off about 8 tenths percent. We check in on some of the banks. JP Morgan right now holding up well. Only down about one tenth percent. Bank of America shares, they catch a bid on the open, only down about three tenths percent. Wells Fargo, yeah, look at this flat right now. We got higher yields. Banks liking that, right? City down about four tenths percent. We check back on Boeing, man. Uh, this is an interesting one. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I was reading this one this morning. That's not it. One more, one more try. We'll get there. Is it this one? No. Okay, it's got to be the last one. I got four different screens up here. Uh, what a bummer. I got to find it. I had a Boeing article up here. No, I got five digits. There it is. 
No? Oh, what a bummer. Bitcoin. All right, I'll find it. The, I think it was Bloomberg had a great one this morning talking about Boeing. Was it? Oh, what a bummer. Apologies, folks. Uh, they had a great one in terms of just quite a mess it is at the factory in terms of what's going on with Boeing and the missed records uh, prior to that door popping out. Not a good article, to put it lightly, but very few good articles for Boeing to put that lightly these days. Yeah. All right, let's check in on the dollar as we wrap up the program. And dollar index, yeah, giving back some of the gains of yesterday, but it is interesting in light of what's been going on. We check in on yields. Ooh, just continuing. We got the tenure at about 4.4% right now. We check in on the dollar yen, US dollar yen right now, hanging above 151, just been chopping around, right? And what's interesting is you're right at that level before the Bank of Japan said they're going to step in in a big way right now. You got the dollar yen trading at 151.59 right now as we got markets trading to lower prices. NASDAQ 100 off 263 points. That's a 1.4% slide. We check in on Tesla shares off 5.4%. Folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day right here. We got our man Basil Chapman. He was battling a few technical issues, but guess what? He got them solved. He's coming up next. Stay tuned for the Tiger Technicians Hour, and we'll finish it up with gold. Don't forget about that gold report sale, folks. Go check it out right now. Gold just hit 2287. Have a great day, folks. We'll be right back.